Hello everyone, it's Davide here and welcome back to Learning Finance. In today's video guys, I want to do an update on Palantir stock, so Palantir Technology, ticker symbol PLTR. Palantir stock, which is a stock that I own, if you follow my channel you know that, however I say it for transparency. I have already done a couple of videos about Palantir. Uh, the first one was actually the bull case scenario, where we analyzed uh, what Palantir can do and that was a 7.75x and then the trillion dollar scenario then I did a later on video where I tried to estimate my honest I intake on Palantir by actually estimated total customers the average revenue per customers going on into something that Palantir can actually do and I told you and I mentioned in previous video that the main difference between this more narrow natural scenario compared to the trillion dollar scenario is just about scalability. This magic word scalability which is something that I want to touch in today's video because I think that in order for Palantir to grow their market cap 5x, 10x or even more into the trillion dollar they need to scale their business. In today's video I want to talk about how that can be possible and what Palantir has done until today because they have a long history and even though a lot of people think that they didn't make profit so they are not a great company actually since 2003 until today they built something that no one has it okay so that puts Palantir absolutely in a strong position compared to everyone else in the business now the only thing I ask you as always is please and only like guys it's very important and I thank you for it it's the only way actually for me to get in noticed on you YouTube having a small channel so thank you and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new updates let's begin now first of all guys before we start I would like to tell you that I am NOT a software expert uh, I am NOT a software engineer I didn't study computer science I studied finance okay so even though I own the shares of Palantir for me this company is a continuous learning process uh, I think that for everyone is actually very difficult to understand the company 100% unless you actually work for them I go on I try to read as much as as I can when I can and whenever I find something uh, that might be interesting I do an update for you if you leave me down comments with your opinion or whatever uh, a constructive conversation I really appreciate it because for me it is something that I learn more and more every single day so I'm not definitely not an expert that's why I continue to read and try to understand whether scalability is possible or not because the business to business model it's not something easy to scale because when you work on contracts and you do something that you actually customize it for every different customers well it's more difficult to scale compared to the standardized product okay something that you do once and you sell it exactly as it is to hundreds of thousands of people okay the masses so I think that this part is important to understand and seeking alpha in my opinion sometimes there are very interesting articles this one is another one on Palantir written by Convacuity so I leave the link down in the description. I definitely don't have any interest in terms of economical interest with Seeking Alpha, but in my opinion, it makes sense to try to understand where Palantir is adding. Now, first of all, what Palantir has done until today. That's important to understand, to try to understand where Palantir is positioned today and how it is possible that no one has done the same. First of all, Peter Thiel, one of the founder of Palantir, his idea of business is structured to avoid the idea of mimetic theory. What that theory is, is basically the idea written by a French historian that people tend to do the same and what all other people do and this is the same in the business area because just think about that when you have a successful idea successful business sooner or later you're gonna find like 10 15 other businesses which are trying to do exactly the same as that successful business does according to P 
Peter Thiel, this is not how you build a successful business. He says that competition is for losers. Basically, if you look at every successful business, real successful business, they built something, they built a product that created a market, okay? So it's not joining a market with a lot of competitors, but it's actually making the market by yourself. And this is why Palantir's uh, since 2003 actually didn't do uh, much profits because they try to differentiate themselves from the normal software businesses, uh, back it up by most of the times investors or venture capital capital firms uh, with basically the idea to create a standardized product and in just two, three, four years sell that product to as much as people as possible, become profitable, make money and sell the business. That's it. Now, Palantir's idea with Peter Thiel is actually to create something that can sacrifice short-term profits for a long-term success, okay? Something that will be monumental according to them. This is why they spent basically the last 17, 18 years trying to build Foundry and Gotham. So in order to do that, how do you do it? And why Palantir is today positioned in a place where no one else is? Because normal businesses, what they do, they create something standardized. Then they hire a lot of salesmen who go outside, sell the product, and make as much money as they can. Palantir didn't hire any salesman until basically the recent partnership with IBM. Why is that? A lot of their employees are all engineers. Their idea is that to build the right product, to build something that can change the world, you need to send engineer to the customer's facilities. So uh, obviously they started with governments, and then big enterprises. And you need to send their engineers and not salesmen because engineers can actually stay there, see how those people work, see what they need. Because a lot of times employees, they feel like they are not creative and productive enough, but they don't understand what they need in order to increase that, improve productivity. So these software engineers, Palantir's engineers, were actually able to go there, speak to people, try to understand the business and try to see what they could have offered in order to change uh, in a mind-blowing way the efficiency of that business itself. Now, in order to do that, you need engineers, you need people who actually develop the software, trying to understand the needs and not salesmen. So that's Palantir's approach, completely different to everyone else. Obviously, in this first part of the business, and that's how they created uh, Gotham and then Foundry, uh, you need to spend a lot of money. So your business will not be profitable. That's, forget about it, okay? It's not how you make money, but it's how you create something that no one has wants to create because it's a, a lot expensive, right? So that's what positioned Palantir in a place where basically uh, they are almost alone in what they are doing. And that's why, uh, in terms of moat, Palantir is absolutely uh, at the best in terms of positioning itself inside the business. Now, once they have created the two platforms, because we know that uh, they spent the last 17 years trying to build Gotham and then Foundry, uh, then together Apollo with them. Apollo is something that helps Palantir to actually... Uh, do updates on the older two platforms, trying to avoid the engineers all the time they had to go inside their customers' facilities. Because remember, this is a bad and a good sign. The good sign is creating a moat. So to send your employees inside the customers' facilities, uh, it makes you do something really customized, something that no one else wants to do, but the bad side is that it is a huge cost for you. And when we take a look at business model of Palantir, we see that it's divided in three parts. So we have the acquire, expand, and scale. Now, 
Palantir operates in the acquire part and also for a huge chunk also in the expand part as a consulting firm. It's not a software-based firm, so it's not a SaaS business model until we reach the scale part of the business. The acquire part is where uh, you have a potential new customer who is interested and you send engineers to their facilities to try to understand what they need, do the pilot, so they set the platform and try to see how it works inside that business. The expand part is developing it vertically and horizontally, but inside these two different parts of the business model of Palantir, Palantir doesn't make money. Where it makes money? When everything is set up already so that engineers can come back to Palantir's facility, the platform remains in the customer's facility, and then it is the scale part of the business, right? Where basically you have this new customer who is able to work and do whatever he can with the Palantir platform. Let's say it's a business, so foundry. So I think that now it's more clear. When you see Palantir inside this, and as well as this, as part of its business, it's not operating as a SaaS, but as a consulting firm. Similar. Now, a SaaS business operates in a different way. You have a software, you have a customer who buys the software and then it pays you, right? So it pays you, I don't know, every year, every month, whatever. But it doesn't need you to be in the customer's facility in order for the software to operate. So that's the scale part of the business of Palantir. Now that we understand that, we understand also why in the previous valuation, I put the total customer's number and I try to increase it, but not crazily, okay? Why is that? Because as of today, if Palantir wants to acquire a new customer, it needs more engineers. Now, if you look at Palantir business plan, that's how it is. And in order to increase the customers substantially, as it is today, they should hire a lot more engineers, right? Because you need those two first uh, parts of the business, right? You need those two before to come to a scale part of the business. So that's why I did that. However, as the article points out, we see that Palantir, obviously, since they started to build Gotham and now, especially with Foundry, the average time that Palantir's engineers spend inside a, a customer's facility is actually declined a lot. Decline, uh, right now, there are 14 days. Before, in the past, we had cases, right? Uh, well, the time spent there was well above one month. So just that is very important for Palantir's business because it makes you understand that actually there is a scaling uh, process going on in there. Now, I don't know whether this going on in the future, uh, we can probably put those 14 days to like five days, six days, four days. Uh, that would be huge for Palantir. Uh, especially if they are able to, for example, instead of four engineers per facility, you send just two of them, okay? So to try to scale those numbers up. And I think that this will be what really can push Palantir's market cap valuation through the roof because the scaling part. So uh, as we can see from the article, look at this graph. Now, they spent since 2003 trying to build the best product and create a moat around. Now they are just joining the scaling part. So now we are somewhere right here, okay? If they are able to do that successfully, then going on in the future, now here they put monopolize. But, well, considering that no one is even near to what Palantir does, well, yes, they can... I'm not saying monopolize, but they can take a huge chunk of the market share, okay? So it's all about that. And in my opinion, Palantir is working 
in Truit, and that's important. Now, I was thinking how it is possible to make a customized software uh, service more scalable, right? Because we know that Palantir goes into a business and try to make something for that business. They say that their products are not making all the businesses the same, are actually empowering single businesses on what they can achieve, right? So that's their plan. Now, as I read through this article over there, it's actually possible the Palantir can scale their product, uh, not just dropping customization and going through standardization, but a little bit in between, right? Because for something called the sector expertise. So as Palantir gathers more and more customers, and those customers, right, are from different industries, but when you work more and more in a single industry, you become more expert in that. And you will realize that different businesses, they have, yes, different issues, but they are not as different as you think. So as Palantir acquired, let's say, one customer from a sector, specific sector, they will have to learn everything about that sector, right? But then when they acquire the second one, the third one, the fourth one, now you understand that they already know a lot of stuff. And even though Palantir doesn't store data, so it's not that like Facebook that they try to acquire more data as possible, but actually uh, also thanks to the feedback process on foundries, actually it's easier in my opinion for Palantir, the acquire process, the expand process, if engineers, they have already done that multiple times in the same sector, they can do it faster, okay? And also they can continue to develop uh, the platform, so Foundry uh, and Gotham as well, in order that they know already uh, how that particular platform uh, should work in a, inside a single industry. So that's the industry expertise. And as Palantir gathers more and more customers in different industries, they can repeat that process over and over. So that, for my understanding, is a way that Palantir can scale going on in the future. In my opinion, in the future, as Palantir get more sector and industry expertise, uh, it can continue to be a very great and interesting investment. It's all about scalability and I am continuing to learn about it and I will continue to post you updates. So I hope you find the video interesting, guys. Keep an eye on the 14th of April because we have the double click demo day of Palantir. So it can be uh, an interesting day. Subscribe to the channel, guys. And as always, have a wonderful day.